You know it's like coming home I will sing 
of the goodness of God. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And in all my days, I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. All my life you have been faithful And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice through the fire and in darkest nights you are close like no other I've known you as a father I've known you as a friend and I have lived in the goodness of God yeah and all my you have been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able oh I will sing of the goodness of God yeah your goodness is running out it's running after me Your goodness is running after It's running after me With my life laid down I'm surrendering now I give you everything Your goodness is running after It's running after me Your goodness is running after Surrender now, I give you everything. Your goodness is running, it keeps running after me. And all my life, you have been faithful. And all my been so, so good with every breath that I am able. Oh, I'm gonna sing of the goodness of God. I'm gonna sing, I'm gonna sing, yeah. All my life you have been faithful. So, so good With every breath that I am able oh, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God Yes, I'm gonna sing Of the goodness of God story oh come gather friends i'll tell you a tale though it isn't done yet you saints and you sinners you daughters and sons the best is yet to come hey little one 
once was a valley that led to a storm. Both were a darkness as real as a war, leaving us broken with nowhere to run. But the best is yet to come. Sing that with me. Yeah, the best is yet to come. So lift up your glasses, raise them on high. Here's to the failure we're leaving behind. Cheers to the future, cause it's just begun. Oh, the best, yeah, the best, yeah, the best. The best is yet to come. Hey! Yeah, we'll drown out the voices inside of our heads. And we'll bury the critics as though they were dead. And we'll prove to the cynics who said it can't be done that the best is yet to come. Sing it with me, peeps. Yeah, the best is. Yeah. Yeah, so lift up your glasses, raise them on high. Here's to the failure we're leaving behind. Cheers to the future, cause it's just begun. Oh, the best, yeah, the best, yeah, the best. The best is yet to come. Hey! As long as we're breathing, it isn't done yet. Let's toast to the battles we haven't yet won. Because the best is yet to come. Lift up your glasses, raise them on high. Here's to the failure we're leaving behind. Cheers to the future, because it's just begun. Oh, the best, yeah, the best, yeah, the best, the best is yet to come, hey, yeah, the best is yet to come, yeah, the best is yet to come, yeah, the best is yet to, <sighs> come.
morning, church, and welcome to our online worship experience where no matter who you are, no matter what you have done, no matter where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. I'm Pastor Sean, and it is my honor to welcome you here to this service. If you would like to get to know us better, just check out our website of firstchurchbloomfield.org. Send us an email, and you can find this information right on our website or on the bulletin if you have received that. If you'd like to become a member of this church, yes, even in these tumultuous times, we are having people join this uh, growing and vibrant community of faith. So if you'd like to do that, reach out through social media or through the contact information from our website, and I'd be happy to talk to you about that. So now let us take a moment to lay aside just for this brief period of time that we have together, lay aside as best as we can the things that are weighing our spirits, our heart, our shoulders, our bodies down. Lay them aside and recognize that God has a gift here just for you. But the thing with gifts is when they're offered, they're not any use unless you accept them and open them and use them. So remember to look for that gift from God today and to take it to open it and to use it. So now let us together say our call to worship. Sometimes we make decisions thinking that they're just for us, but our decisions impact more than just us. Sometimes we do things thinking the implications will only impact us, but what we do impacts others. Some impacts we will come to know. Others we will never know. God created this world in such a way that we are all connected. God created this world so that we are dependent upon each other. Let us gather together in worship, remembering that our God of creation is counting on us to make good decisions, decisions that impact us, decisions that impact those we know and those we will never know because we are all connected. Amen. Now please join together in the singing of our opening hymn. The lyrics will be on screen. together in our unison prayer. The words will be found in the bulletin and on screen. God of creation, you created the world from your very self. Thank you for this creation. Thank you for creating life. Thank you for creating us. You created the world in a particular way. You created the world so that everything and everyone is connected. You created the world so that we are dependent on each other. You created the world counting on us to care about each other and about the world. Thank you for your presence with us. Thank you for connecting us even as we are in different places. May we be worthy of the trust that you have placed in us. Help us to remember that what we do matters. Help us to remember that what we choose to do impacts 
others. Because we are all connected to each other and to you. Amen. Now please enjoy the music and sing along to the song Chain Breaker, performed by Scott Troyer and Katie Nelson Troyer. Good morning, Good morning Bloomfield. Bloomfield. This song is called Chain Breaker. It may be new to you. It's written by Zach Williams and it talks about how Jesus is the one who breaks our chains. This is how the chorus goes. If you've got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains, he's a chain breaker. If you've been walking the same old road for miles and miles If you've been hearing the same old voice to the same old lies If you're trying to fill the same old holes inside Well, there's a better life There's a better life If you got pain Shaking Savior, we got chains. He's a chain breaker. We've all searched for the light of day in the dead of night. We've all found ourselves worn out from the same old fight. And we've all run to things we know just stay right. There's a better life, there's a better life. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chain, he's a chain. believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify oh if you believe it if you receive it if you can feel it somebody testify testify oh if you believe it if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, a saving, he's a prison shaking savior. If you got chains. Shaking Savior, you got chains. He's a chain breaker. We'll now have the pastoral prayer followed by a unison saying of the Lord's Prayer. Gracious God, we need you. We are asking for your help. For our congregation, for everyone joining the service this morning or who will be watching it at some other time, we need your presence, your support, and your help. People are grieving. People are grieving the loss of loved ones, losses of jobs, losses of relationships. Many of us are grieving the loss of a way of life, the touch of friends, the hugs 
of those we love and the handshakes of those we respect. We are grieving the pain of seeing a country torn apart by petty people abusing their power. We are grieving the loss of now 140,000 people who have died from COVID-19, many of them preventable, but for that petty abuse of power and the lack of respect for the connectedness of all of your creation. Help us to have the courage to follow your way and to have faith be our guide and to reach out to help others and to accept help from others when we could use it. Help us see the connections of your creation. Help us appreciate the power of those connections among all of us. Help us to help each other knowing you are by our sides and we are doing this together. Walk with us, be by our sides in ways that every person can feel it, whether they believe in you or not. And when the burden is too great, when that time comes, when things are so difficult that we cannot even put one foot in front of the other, lift us up and carry us and hold us in your arms until we are ready to be able to walk with you by our side again. Until we are able to move forward again, connected, together, as you intended. And as Jesus, Jesus taught us to pray together, let us say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us of our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Today's exciting passage is taken from Jonah chapter 1, verse 4 through 16. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and such a mighty storm came upon the sea that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God. They threw the cargo that was in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. Jonah, meanwhile, had gone down into the hold of the ship, and had laid down and was fast asleep. The captain came and said to him, What are you doing sound asleep? Get up, call on your God. Perhaps the God will spare us a thought on what we do, uh, so that we do not perish. The sailors said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, so that we may know on whose account this calamity has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us why this calamity has come upon us. What is your occupation? Where do you come from? What is your country? And of what people are you? I am a Hebrew, he replied. I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men were even more afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew he was fleeing the presence of the Lord, because he had told them so. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? For the sea was growing more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Pick me up and throw me into the sea. Then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great storm has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rowed hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not. The sea grew more and more stormy against them. Then they cried out to the Lord, Please, O Lord, we pray, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood, for you, O Lord, have done as it pleased you. So they picked, a, picked Jonah up and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord even more, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. 
So we're returning to our four-part series about the book of Jonah. And in week one, running from Nineveh, we gave some background about Jonah and what was going on in the first three verses of this really, really interesting book. And we talked about how Jonah was from the northern kingdom of Israel in a period of time after Israel had split into two, two different nations, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of of Judah. And the capital of the northern kingdom was Samaria. And Jonah was a prophet to the king of Samaria, who lived in Samaria for the kingdom of Israel. But there was a superpower at this time known as the Syrian Assyrian Empire, the Assyrian Empire. And that's represented here by all of this orange sections of Egypt and Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, sections of modern Turkey, and over in Syria, and right here is what northern kingdom of Israel and Judah, just this little thing right here, and the whole, the whole Syrian empire kind of seizing right on it. And the Assyrian empire was known as a very dangerous and cruel empire, and they had their eyes targeted on northern Israel. And God asked Jonah to go to that capital of the Assyrian empire, and that capital was Nineveh. And that was about a 500-mile walk, and the message God wanted him to give is, you're doomed. You're doomed. I know you're evil, and I want you to tell him you're doomed. And Jonah was having none of it. So Jonah decided, I am going to go in the opposite direction from where God said. As a matter of fact, Jonah thought that he could actually get away from God. It says, Jonah went in the opposite direction to get away from God. God, and he went to a port town called Joppa and got on a ship to head to Tarshish, which was like the end of the world for people back then. It's a real place, but the end of the world, like 2,000 mile journey would take a year in one of the most dangerous trips you could possibly take. And so Jonah had decided to disobey God and run in the opposite direction and try to hide from God. Now we're in part two called Impacting Others. And we're going to take on the next verses in chapter one from verse four through verse 16. And what happens when he gets on that ship and starts off into the sea. So what we have here is all of a sudden a huge storm hits fairly early into the journey. And in this storm, it is an enormous storm and it threatens to break up the boat and the sailors are scrambling around here and they're yelling help to their gods they're praying to their gods they are not uh, they're not Jewish so they're each praying to their own God but they're out there together yelling help and then they're throwing the cargo off the ship to lighten the ship to give it a chance to survive meanwhile Jonah is asleep inside the ship and the captain comes out and is like what are you doing and gets Jonah up and the sailors and Jonah get together and draw lots to determine whose fault this storm is. Because at that time, that is how they determined whose responsibility it was, which is still a superstition. And it's been a superstition for sailors for a long time. That when something happens, sometimes it's somebody's fault that this took place. So they did something called drawing lots. And basically what they did is they took four sticks and put them behind someone's hand or behind something so that they all looked even and they all drew lots, drew one of these sticks or straws. And then when they were all pulled, you found that there were three of a similar length and one drawing the short straw. You may know this phrase, drawing the short straw. That's what this comes from. And Jonah was the one who drew the lot that said he was the one responsible for this storm that threatened the ship and everybody else's lives. And so the sailors say, what is it that you did? They start asking him all these questions. And you may have heard of this thing, who, what, where, why, when, and how. It's a classic construct for people to gather information or problem solving. Detectives use it, people use it, and it was originally, uh, it's credited originally all the way back to Aristotle, like the year 350 B.C., Interestingly, the time when this story of Jonah was written is in a similar time frame. It was talking about a time much farther back from that, 
but when it was actually written down and compiled, it was about that same time. So these sailors were using this construct and asking, who are you? Why is this happening? What is going on? Where are you from? And when is all this happening? And this all takes place in verse 8. You can go through it. And they're going right through the who, what, where, why, when, and how of all of this stuff. And then Jonah answers. And Jonah answers, I am a Hebrew, and I am running from the Lord. I am running from the Lord, and I am running from the Lord of the heavens, of the sea, and of the earth. I am running from the Lord of the heavens and the sea and the earth, which begs the question, if Jonah knows that this is the God who created the heavens, the seas, and the earth, where was he going? What was he running to to be able to get away from God? So after hearing this, the sailors were like, what? You, you, you did, you're doing what? And they actually began to respect because they're in the middle of the storm and know that it's Jonah, uh, Jonah being basically uh, punished for running away from God, that the storm is taking place because of Jonah's actions. And they're like, what have you done for us? What have you done to us? And what are we supposed to do about it? Because they're trapped in the same situation created by Jonah. So Jonah, in verse 12, says, well, it's my fault that this storm is happening. So what you need to do is take me and toss me over into the sea. Toss me over into the sea. But the reaction of the sailors, instead of being self-interested, they're like, no, we're not going to do that. You're an innocent Man, and what they mean by that, they, they're not rejecting this idea that he's running from God. They're rejecting this idea that he had done anything to them. And so they decide they're going to row really hard and row to try to get back and save Jonah and save themselves. And then they started praying, not to their own gods, but to the Lord, because they realized that there was another God out there in addition to theirs or as a substitute to theirs, who is creating this storm, and so they're praying to the Lord for this to stop. But who is doing the praying? Is Jonah doing the praying? No, Jonah's not doing the praying. It says the sailors are doing the praying, not Jonah. And the sailors are doing the rowing, not Jonah. Jonah is stubbornly refusing to do anything that would connect him back with God. He is continuing to run away from God, despite the storm, despite his now admission and understanding that this is the God who created the heavens and all of the seas and all of the land, that he really can't get away from God. He isn't taking that realization and saying, oh, okay, I'll pray now to help everybody else. We're all getting there in row. He's continuing to stubbornly say, I refuse to turn back to God. And so finally, the sailors say, please don't have this innocent man's blood on our hands. But there was no other solution, and they tossed Jonah into the sea. Now, I want to make sure we all understand something. This was not some kind of heroic move or some kind of special leap of faith. He was not expecting to get saved. It wasn't that he had this huge trust in God. He was running away from God. He wasn't going into the water knowing that he would be saved. He was so stubborn, so rebellious, so not wanting to go to Nineveh, so willing to not follow God's rules that he was willing to be tossed into the sea and die. Now, on one level, that's his right. And if it was just going to impact him, that's one thing. But does it just impact him? Has his decision to run away from God and get tossed into, sea, into the sea just impacted him? Let's find out about that. 
<clears throat> the answer is no. Jonah's actions and Jonah's decisions impact so many other people. Some he knows. He knows it impacted the sailors. He met them and his actions impacted them. The king that he abandoned back in the northern kingdom of Israel, back in Samaria, is impacted by his decision to run away. His friend Joe, Joseph, his friends and family. How do you think his mom feels? Or if his mom's not still around, how the rest of his family? So the people who count on him and his friends and family are all impacted by this as well. So people he knows were impacted by his decision, not just himself. But in addition to that, there were other people who were impacted. What about the people who were expecting all of this stuff to arrive on the ship? All of those people were impacted economically, and who knows what was in there, the captain, the crew, other people were impacted as a result of all of that getting tossed. People who he never met and never would meet. And then, of course, finally, a whole society of the Assyrian Empire, without going to Nineveh, refusing to go to Nineveh, refusing to do the thing that could help the other people because of his selfishness. There was a whole society that was at risk, a whole city of people who wouldn't get the warning and would be destroyed because he was unwilling to do something himself to help them. Now, sure, he might not have wanted to do it, but his decision to do this had all of these implications for all these people, including a whole city that was the capital city that could cause the destruction of a whole civilization. So what does that have to do with us today? Why should we care? Why should you care? Can you think of any situation today where decisions are being made that don't just impact you, but impact people you know, and might impact people that you don't know, might even affect a whole city, might even impact a whole civilization. What about wearing a mask? What about physical distancing? What about respecting science which is all based on God's creation. God created the universe such that there are certain things that we can know and we can study and we can learn in order to be able to do good things for ourselves and good things for other people. We know the science. We know the facts that masks and physical distancing can save people's lives. By the time you're seeing this, 140,000 people will have died as a result of the COVID-19 illness. A person not wearing a mask, a person refusing to do the proper physical distancing and the other things that we could do to help other people isn't just impacting themselves. Just like with Jonah, it is a selfish act running away from the reality of God saying, here's a way with this situation that I have given you to be able to protect yourself and others. It can help you. It can also help the people, your coworkers and other people you associate with. It can help your friends. It can help your family. It can help people who you don't even know. Their whole cities at risk. And if we don't get this under control, if we don't let go of our own selfishness, if we don't let go of our own rebelliousness, of this idea of this fierce individualism, this hyper-individualism that allows us to say, I'm an American, so I don't have to do that. If we don't turn away from that and turn and recognize that God has created the world in such a way that we are all connected and we are all responsible for each other, we are each other's brothers and sisters keepers. And our whole society is at risk. 
we're going to continue with the lesson about Jonah for two more parts of the series. But there may not be one as important, and we haven't even gotten to the big fish or the whale yet. The story of Jonah has so many messages for us today that are relevant to you, to the people next to you, and to the entire city, to the entire civilization of the United States of America and beyond. Don't run away from God. Remember, your decisions don't just impact you. They impact others who you know, people who you will never know, to the ends of the earth. Amen. Now please enjoy Paul Coleman and feel free to sing along as he shares his music, the song he wrote for this time of offering called The One Thing. Here I am, the river of questions, can I pour my heart out? Well, I see this life, it's valleys and mountains, and I think of all the roads that brought me here, oh, that brought me here, walking down, walking down the road, yeah, yeah. Well, I've questioned my reasons, this life I'm living, I question my ability to judge wrong from right. And I question all the things I've ever called certain My race, my religion, my country, my mind But the one thing I don't question is you You really love me like you say you do You really love me like you say you do So hold me Come on now, hold me Well, I've questioned existence, meaning and relevance Does the work I'm doing really matter at all? And I've questioned my friendships, alliance, dependence well, Who will still be here when I fall? Jeremy will But the one thing I don't question is you You really love me like you say yeah, the one thing I don't question is you You really love me like you say you do So hold me Hold me tighter than your iPhone Hold me Hold a loved one so tight tonight Hold me mm -hmm. uh -uh. Gracious God, thank you for bringing us all together, even in these unexpected ways, in these very different times. Thank you for those who hear your call and follow it all the way into Nineveh. For all people who are sacrificing a bit of themselves to help the greater good and make it better for others. Thank you for the gift of food and water. Thank you for the gift of the very breath that we have. Thank you for breath, 
and for your love. Help us to remember that we are not here simply to wait, but that we have a job to be a blessing to creation, a creation that you put together in such a way that it only works when we recognize we're connected and behave in such a way as we're all connected and in it together. Something that works best when we witness to your love in the world and welcome and trust your guidance to us and go out and do it even when it seems scary. Thank you for the generosity of spirit of this congregation. Thank you for the gift, the giving, and the giver. And may we offer this up to the Holy Spirit to do what the Holy Spirit does best, which is multiply what we offer up to it to make the world a better place for everybody. Now let us join together in our closing hymn, the words will be on screen. join us for our time of connecting and asking questions and just gathering together and enjoying each other's company as we, as we have our bring your own coffee coffee hour. But before that, the benediction. May love bless you and keep you. May love make its face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and be gracious unto you may love lift up its countenance its countenance upon you and give you peace and give you peace. Go in peace. not an age of faith. This is not an age of miracles. We don't believe anything they say. We don't believe anything at all. But when the December comes and grabs you by the throat, you better look for something burning deep inside your coat. From the top of this mountain, I can see King Ham, the blue of the vineyard. And the gold of the grain right across that river Candles flicker If I didn't know better I'd crawl in the trees Well, the walls of Jericho And the walls of Jerusalem Came tumbling down long ago And they never got built again 
Will you stand in the rubble where the rocks and bullets whine? Will you stand in the garden, reach your hand across the line? From the top of this mountain, I can see Canaan, the blue of the vineyard, and the gold of the grain. Right across that river, candles to burn. If I didn't know better, I'd call it a dream. Of Gaza. In the shadow of the Golan Heights, in the fortress of Masada, through centuries of light, one light was always burning, even when the fuel was gone. This mountain, I can see Canaan, the blue of the vineyard, and the gold of the grain. Cross that river, candles to burn. If I didn't know better, I'd fall in the tree. From the top of this mountain, I can see Canaan, the blue of the vineyard. Oh, that you're brave.